Hi, uh, this is a bit different than what I usually do, but I'm gonna show you how to load black and white film into a camera. Like that one. That's on, that's on the menu. Not the menu. The, the, ma the manual. The manual. First thing you're gonna need, obviously, is some black and white film. Um, the film I use is Ilford HP5 Plus black and white film, and it's for ISO 400. Um, if you're going to a college, chances are you'll find packs of film much cheaper online than in the bookstore. Because, like, in my college, one pack is like $8, so I'm like... Um, I'm broke enough already, so... And obviously next you're gonna need, you need your film camera. Uh, I got the Ringo... Not the... The Rico Singlex 2. Because the prequel sucked or something, I don't know. Just kidding, but yeah, thanks grandpa. And hey, after this tutorial, if you still got questions or whatever regarding this specific camera, I'm gonna post a link to the online manual in the description below because it's like... I can't really, I can't really read you this because... That would be, that'd be boring. I mean, we can try it, so let's, let's do it. Never mind. I, I don't feel like reading. Also, in addition, I am not a photography pro. I just had to take a photography class for college. So I just figured, like, well, I was confused as hell when I first started, so why not ease that confusion by making a video? We're gonna make sure of a few thingamajigs. So, since I'll be photographing in black and white, I want to make sure that, that thing right there is set to B and W. Because it's not empty and it's not color, so just make sure it's B and W. Or if you are shooting in color, then make sure it's in color. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, and it's because I've been shooting in it all freaking semester at college, I'm going to use Ilford HP5 Plus. I'm also going to make sure that my ISO is set to 400, which I can tell it's set to that because of that green little number. And usually you can tell what ISO your film needs because it's like on the box right there. ISO 400 by 27 inches, but yeah. So first you just gotta get, get the canister out of the box and then uh, you can keep the box or not. I don't usually burn them. And your canister is gonna be kept in here. I would keep this because sometimes when working in the dark room, I don't like to bring the whole damn camera. So I just like to keep it in here. But yeah, there's your little film canister. But before we get that out, we're gonna open our camera and uh, obviously make sure that there's no film in your camera in the first place, otherwise you're just gonna have to do something that'll explain in the unloading process, so. But what you're gonna do is, and it doesn't really matter if you keep the lever like this or not, just as long as you can pull this open. And just pop that bad boy open and then be like, Wajja! Okay, maybe not do that, because then you'll break your camera and that would be very sad and you would cry. And uh, I'm just gonna burn or overexpose the shit out of the first few images because it's light and whatnot, but just to show you what it can do. So, you just place your film canister in like so, and then you're gonna push this button back in. And if it doesn't go in all the way, then just make sure it goes in like that, because you're gonna turn it just so the thing at the bottom of this <laughs> fits into the top of that. It's kind of like screwing in a screw up or something like that. Once that's in, you're gonna take out your film, pull it, and then that slot right there is where your film is one gonna go. Because while I started off photographing, I thought, oh, you just have to wind it onto this. No, you gotta catch it onto that, so it's got that one little hook there where this is gonna go. So just pull it until you get it in there. And what I do is also be sure to make sure your film is flat. And what you do is you pull this lever until it's rolled in nice and tight like that. So now that you got that caught, um, I personally would just either shut this and then like reel a few more times with this lever just to make your film make sure your film is nice and secure and basically just keep winding this lever until it's you know not black anymore or whatever. I'll just show you an example. So you're just gonna keep pulling the lever and then there you go. Now just to be safe, take a few pictures or if you're doing this in the light like I am because you don't wanna like take a photo of something cool because then chances are if it's one of the first photos you took and you just did it the way that I did it, you're gonna get completely back black screens. And you can also keep count of how many films you're taking with this window at the top. Yeah, just make sure to take a few, 
Not too many, but just a few pictures to ensure that you're not just taking photos of something with film that's already been exposed to light, because otherwise you ain't gonna see shit once you develop it. All right, so that is how you load your camera. I'm not gonna touch that button, and I'll explain why, and I'm not gonna open this at all anymore, and I'll explain why. So yeah, we're gonna move on to how to unload this thing, so. Alrighty, after you've uh, hopefully used up all your roll, because it would be kind of weird if you just unloaded it immediately after you loaded it, first thing you're gonna do is just, on the bottom of your camera, there's gonna be a little button. When you push that button, it's gonna release the film cartridge in here. So that way, you can lift up this lever, and there should be a little arrow on it to tell you which way to turn it. And what you're gonna wanna do is just keep turning it, and I don't have anything in there right now, but just an example. You're gonna keep turning it, and it's gonna f you're gonna feel pressure, because you're rewinding all your film back into the canister, so that when you go into the dark room, you open it up with the can opener, and then da da da. And just keep rolling until you feel either a click, or you feel like there's no pressure. But I'm paranoid as shit, so I just continue to roll for like, way longer than I need to just in case, because nothing would suck more than going into the dark room and being like, oh, my photos are already exposed. Great! And then after that's done, you can s close your lever. Then you're gonna pull up on this knob right here. And what that's gonna do, it's like a secret doorway. It's gonna open it. Open the back of the thing, and then huzzah. Nothing in there. You should see like a full canister or just your canister, basically the exact way you put it in the first time, except without like the tail end of the film. So then you just take the film out and then shut this. Never ever push this button in while you're photographing. Otherwise you will screw up your film reel and it'll just become a tornado inside your light sealed box. So yeah, don't push that while you're photographing. Only after you're absolutely sure there's nothing left on the roll. Congrats, you made it to the end of the video and you still, and you now know how to load a film into this and unload the film from this. And if you still don't know, again, the manual to this specific camera is in the description below. Have fun taking pictures of whatever the hell you want as long as you're like not being creepy. And if you're taking pictures of people, ask their consent, whatever. If you, if you see any aliens or whatever, take take pictures of those too, because I, I need those. Okay, great. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to be awesome and stay awesome. I hope this tutorial helped. Also, treat your cameras like you would treat a baby kitten. You don't you don't want to drop it. I mean, cats land on the feet, but I don't. Cameras don't. I mean, we could try it. I mean, let's find out.